for those of you who are skeptics, it's in operation. It works. It just finished a six-month test with the EPA. We were deployed in Houston, Texas after the storms. We were employed in Miami after the hurricane. In Port Arthur, Texas, we had four machines that produced every day 8,000 gallons of water. And the beauty of our system that makes us very unique is our cost efficiency. And remember, if you go to a village or you go to a city and you bring in, after a disaster, for 10,000 people water and you bring in 10,000 gallons of water that day, the next day you have to bring in 10,000 gallons of water. And the day after that, you need to bring in 10,000 gallons of water. And by the way, all the plastic, after being in Houston, Texas, and seeing the amount of plastic that was after the disaster, you don't need any plastic. With a generator and our units, you're able to generate water. We currently have three systems that are for sale. One is a mobile unit that's placed on the back of a truck with a generator. Anywhere where there's humidity over 25% and heat over 7 degrees Celsius, we are able to generate up to 200 gallons of water with a unit. We have another unit that we can generate between 1,200 and 1,500 gallons of water a day. And again, we are working now currently with the United States Department of Agriculture. And this applies the same way for the Chad Basin. You have farmers who lose crops because there's not enough water. We are drought insurance. With drip irrigation and the current technologies, you are able to produce and guarantee a farmer his crop. That employs people, that feeds people. With our units that create water, in Africa, close to one million children die a year from waterborne diseases. Let's, let me repeat that number. 1.7 million children die globally, one million children die in Africa a year from not having clean water. So I sit before you reading some very, very interesting statistics before I came. And I'd like to share that with you. The Lake Chad Basin provides a lifeline to nearly 30 million people in four countries in Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad, and Niger. It was once Africa's largest water reservoir in the Sahel region. It covered an area at one point of 26,000 square kilometers, about the size of Maryland, and bigger than the country of Kuwait. So we all sit here and we say, we're all here for one purpose. Thank you. We are all here for one purpose, is how do we solve the problem? So as a company, I tell you, as the president of WaterGen USA, that our technology is available to assist and feed and produce water for villages around the globe. You know, it's a little daunting when people say, what do you do, we don't have water? And we kind of raise our hand and we say, yeah, you do. We do. And it's cost effective. To give you an idea of the cost, one of these light bulbs, for the cost of running it for one hour, is the cost of one gallon of water. One gallon of water 
is the cost of energy cost to produce a gallon of water for a family. We have mobile units that we are currently have deployed in Carolina currently. We've worked with FEMA. We've worked with the Red Cross. We are now in Cape Town, South Africa. Our units have passed all their testing that the government asked for. And now we have an order in manufacturing in Columbia, South Carolina, manufacturing 300 units that are going over there. So what's the solution for all of us sitting here? First of all, it's to know that there is a solution to provide water for villages, clean drinking water, without having to dig wells that there's no guarantee with what you're going to find. Our water is, a, is pure. It's 7.6 pH, and it has a mineral balance, and the maintenance is so simple that basically every six months you change the filters and you change the mineral pack. I'll take questions. Go ahead. <coughs> Well, that's why we're all here, number one. And there are charities, there's the United Nations, there's the banks. There are a group of different organizations that are looking to fund projects that are sustainable. It's a matter of, I don't think it's an issue of money. I think it's an issue of a will. I think it's an issue of a group of people banding together. I cannot tell you how many times I've spoken in front of the UN on various water issues, and everybody says, great, 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 and then they want to give you six years of paperwork before you'll put in your unit. So I don't, you know, that, that's the reality, and that's why it takes people sitting in a room and saying we're going to solve a problem and actually solve a problem. Maybe it's private, maybe it's private-public partnerships, maybe it's charity partnerships, but there isn't an excuse. And I said this at the UN, I said there is no excuse any longer for somebody to say to me at meetings, well, that's a great idea, and I think in five years I'll find money in the budget for it. Okay, but what about the children today, and what about the fact that people are dying every day from not having clean water? Go ahead. Sure, sure, absolutely. The mobile vehicle, which comes with a truck, a generator, and a machine that generates um, 200 gallons of water a day in a 24-hour period on an average temperature and humidity, uh, costs about $160,000. The machine itself costs $75,000 freight on board from Miami or South Carolina. And the large-scale machine that does... 1,200 gallons to 1,500 gallons costs approximately $135,000, and that, is, has, that unit has to be outdoors. But remember, there is no longer a cost for infrastructure. You're not running pipes through a whole village. You're not digging. You're not doing anything. Once the unit has the power, as long as we have power, we're able to run 24-7. Thank you very much. Thanks. One sec, there as well. Go ahead. Oh, or okay. We'll give, go ahead. Last question. So two things. One, it's a great question. Two, it's much easier to clean air than it is to clean water. So to give you an idea, our units in China or in Vietnam that exist currently, if it, the air is really, really dirty, you have to change the filter a little bit more often, but that's about it. That's really the only difference. And the beauty of our product, our byproduct is cleaner air. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome.